Good morning, church. It's time to praise God. Let's worship Him this morning. For the word of God says, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our Maker, for He is our God, and we are His people. We are His people of His pleasure and the sheep of His hand. Let us worship Him this morning. Let us pray. Father, I thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you for your goodness over our life. Thank you for taking care of us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this day we can come before you and worship you, Lord. As saints, together we can worship you and lift your name on high, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah.
this morning father thank you for your presence in this place thank you for speaking to us touching our hearts father this morning father we set in this time into your hand father thank you jesus for touching our life lord i make this prayer in jesus name i pray amen amen church before we begin let's pray lord i just want to thank you for this time lord jesus i pray lord that as i speak your word that every single word that comes out of my mouth would be guided by you and by the holy spirit lord jesus and i pray lord that as we learn from your word and from this story lord that each one of us will have something to take back and apply into our lives lord jesus and that we would grow in you more and more with each passing day lord jesus i submit this time i submit the word and i submit every person listening into your mighty hands lord jesus in your matchless name i pray amen so today morning we are going to learn about a character from the bible that many of us might have not heard about and this character or this person is by called by the name of Barzillai, or the typical Hebrew pronunciation of it is Barzillai. Now, I am more comfortable saying Barzillai, so throughout my sermon, I'll be referring to him as Barzillai. But when y'all say y'all can please say it as Barzillai. So we see in the Bible that uh, if we read through the verses, something is said about him that the Bible doesn't say about quite a few many people. the bible calls him a great man now uh, whenever i'll be speaking or whatever references that i give you during this time for all the references for all the verses i have referred to the kjv version of the bible so in the kjv when you read through the verses it refers to barzillai as a great man but now for all the others who would be referring to any other version some interpreted as he was a wealthy man or some interpreted that he was a very rich man now i did a little digging to see did all these three words mean the same or what exactly it was so the actual hebrew literal translation of wealthy or rich or great actually meant a very great man so barzillai was referred to as a very great man and when they were saying wealthy or when they were saying rich it implied a lot more than just wealth and barzilla is taken out for a very special notice if you see in the bible now what does the word barzilla mean now barzilla means man of strong or man of iron it also means the son of contempt so today morning we will look at all the points that we can learn from this old man that is barzillai points that we can actually apply into our life and points that he did that we shouldn't be doing into our lives so i have divided this entire section into two parts the first part is barzillai's testimony of excellence 
and Barzilai's testimony of excuses. So let's begin with the first part, which is Barzilai's testimony of excellence. The reference for this first point is 2 Samuel chapter 17 from the verses 26 to 29. The very first point here is the way he was living was a testimony. Now Barzillai was a man marked by excellence. Now they say that he was four score years or he was 80 years old. So just imagine in those 80 years he had seen through so many different leaders in Israel. And just imagine what he might have been thinking of each of these leaders in Israel. There comes Eli, there comes Samuel, there comes Saul, then there comes David, then there is also Jonathan. So now, let's assume that what he might have thought about these leaders. Probably when he saw Eli, he must have said, okay, a nice man, a good priest probably, but maybe he was not a very good parent. His children were not on the right line. Then there comes Samuel. Probably he respected Samuel for who he was. But maybe he thought that probably Samuel too had some failed sons or he failed to rule his own sons. Then comes Saul, a man big in stature, probably very little in his soul. Then comes Jonathan. Maybe he would have approved of Jonathan, but probably then he might have thought that Jonathan was not even able to face Goliath. And then comes David. Now when he looked at David, he might have thought, maybe this is a different kind of a person. Probably this guy is a guy after God's own heart. And maybe he might have imagined that out of all the shenanigans that was going on with all of Israel's leadership about David, he might have thought that maybe this is my kind of guy or maybe this is my kind of leader. And all of that put together, he thought that probably of all that he's heard about David, maybe everything is correct. He might have heard about David's goodness. He might have heard about David's effective government. He might have heard about David's exceptional grace. And maybe he might have felt a little pull towards David. Though, nowhere does in the Bible it says that he had met David previously. But he still felt a slight pull or a slight inclination towards David. Does that sound familiar to any of us? Yes, it may be. Because it's very similar to our and Christ is life. We have never seen God. We have never seen him face to face. Yes, we have seen him through the Holy Spirit. But we have never sat face to face with him in person. But still we have a pull towards him. That's why he tells Thomas, Blessed are they that have not even seen me. And coming back to David. Now in David's hour of need, Barzillai was there. Now, if you read through a little story background, we see that David is actually running away from Absalom, that is his son. And there was a very clever propaganda or a political agenda that was created where all the focus or all the attention was shifted towards Absalom and the people actually rejected David as their king. And one of the people instrumental in doing this, along with Absalom, was Ahithophel who was also close to David. But we see that in spite of all the people rejecting David, when David was in need, Barzillai, without any hesitation, yes, there were other two people also with him, but since we're focusing, or since the topic is about Barzillai, we'll focus about Barzillai. So when David was in need, Barzillai, without any hesitation, he just picks up all that he can and he goes to help David. It says he marches straight to Mahanaim and declared himself for the Lord's anointed. Now at that time, it was a very courageous thing for him to do. Imagine if everybody is against someone and you are just going to help that person. Imagine it could be a point of fear. But Barzil, I didn't think of any of those things. Whatever for his age, however he was, he picked up all that he could and he just went straight away, he headed to help David. Now, what do we notice here? He wasn't just a fair weather supporter of David. He just didn't go there because David was the king and David was running. He went there. He actually went to help David there. He was there to support David, even though all the other people had rejected David. Does that sound familiar to us? Are we fair weather supporters 
of our Christ Jesus. Do we only support or do we only go to Christ when everything seems fine, when the environment around us seems nice or when there's nobody watching us or nobody looking at us? Is only that time that we go to God or we go to God in spite of what anyone has to say to us because we have that relationship with Him. And not only just fair with the supporters of Christ, many of us are also guilty of being fair with the supporters of people. We can see that happening so much around us. We just support people or we just support a particular person because of our own agendas. Maybe we want something in life from that person or maybe that person is in a better position so that person can get you higher in your position and therefore we support that person. But we need to learn from Barzillai that his living was a testimony. He did something in spite of everyone rejecting that person. We too need to be the same. We should not be fair weather supporters, neither of people and neither of God. We need to stand up for what is true. Now, as per the people, he was rejected. As per everyone, they said he was the wrong man on the throne. But maybe Barzillai saw that David was anointed by God. And in spite of what the people had to say or what anyone had to say, he went there to support them or to support David. The second thing we can learn from Barzillai is the way he was giving was a testimony. Now in this, we will look at three sub-points. The first we learn from his giving is that he was a cheerful giver. Nobody forced him to go and help David or nobody begged him to go and help David or nobody said, no, no, you need to go and take this. He just took whatever he could and he went to help David no matter what the situation was around him. Similarly, we need to learn from him that in all that we need to do, we need to be cheerful givers. All that we have, we need to give God cheerfully and not just out of force or out of sheer compelment to do it. But we need to cheerfully, smilingly give for God. Now if you notice through the story, the way it's recorded is very interesting. Everywhere, whatever that he gives, it always says, and this, and that, and lentils, and beans. If you observe, everything is noted. Whether it be beans, whether it be lentils, whether it be even curd. Now curd is not something very big, curd is something very small. But even curd is noted in the list that Barzillai gave. What is this trying to tell us? This is that nothing we give to the Lord is ever overlooked. Whether it be big, whether it be small, it doesn't have a value. God sees your heart when you give. He was a cheerful giver, he gave and therefore everything that he gave was very clearly noted in the Bible because the value of the size of that item was not the main point. The way he gave it was what made the difference. The motive with which he gave it, the heart with which he gave it was most important. He just loaded up his wagon and, he, and all that he ca could carry with all of that, he headed straight towards where David was. And with the way you see that he gave, probably the way that David received help from all these people. That's why David could write in the Psalm 23 that we very commonly read about, where he says that thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Second aspect we can learn from his giving is that he was compassionate. Now, we can learn a very important difference between sympathy and compassion from this story. Now, with the type of person that Barzillai was, during the hour of crisis, he helped David in need. And it was not like he, was, he must have thought that I am old. Maybe I can't fight for David in the army. I don't have so much of an influence that I can influence Absalom or something. But what he could do was that he could give. So he gave. Now sympathy is a very good thing. Now what is sympathy? You tell someone that, okay, I'm feeling sorry for you. Oh, I understand your situation. My heart goes out to you, which is absolutely appropriate. But sometimes sympathy is just not enough. 
we also need to be compassionate and what this compassion being compassionate means or true compassion means true compassion is always expressed not just merely in words but actually through action now this reminds me of a story of a father and son so on a weekend one day uh, a father and his son went out to get their monthly groceries and while they were at the supermarket they were down in the parking area and they were just about to take their vehicle and move out and just when they were about to do that they saw a, a very old poor woman sitting at the side and uh, as soon as the father saw her the father looked at the son and was starting to reason that what could have gone wrong with this woman maybe her parents left her or maybe she had a bad marriage and she had to move out of the house and now she doesn't have anything to support herself or maybe her children threw her out of the house he was just reasoning that oh it's so sad she's like this oh it's so sad it's like that i wish something better could happen to her and this small little boy of his who was just around 6 years old looked up at the father and said dad don't you think we should be doing something about her rather than just talking about her so the father very amused didn't say anything to his son he just smiled and said so what do you think we should do the son said for now maybe we could just give her something to eat she looks hungry she does she looks like she's not eaten food for a very long time we could just give her food and maybe some water and then we could go back and see if there is something that she could do where she could earn and eat by herself and we don't have to provide for her so the father just thought thinking that wow this small little son thought me so much today i was having sympathy on that woman i was feeling sorry for her but my son was just a little more than being sympathetic he was compassionate to this woman he actually wanted to go and do something to her he got down he brought something from the supermarket to eat he brought her a bottle of water and he gave it to her and they drove back home thinking that they could probably do something for her later on and this is how the story went that small little boy thought his father the actual difference between what just being sympathetic and what being compassionate actually was sympathy alone cannot change things but compassion drives us to do something that can actually transform lives and situations in very powerful ways so today we can try learn to be a little more than just sympathetic we can learn to be compassionate from barzilai the third aspect we learn from his giving is that he expected no favors from the king in return now if you look around us we are at such a time where everyone around us helps only because they have something else in mind or they help someone thinking that okay if i help this person today tomorrow i can get this out of that person so everyone is helping the other just with a secret agenda in their mind they may not say it out but they have something running through their mind that okay if i do this i can get this but here we see barzilai he is helping the king now david was a great king so imagine helping david with so many things he could have thought or oh, i can get this out of him or i can get that out of him he can help me in my farms or he can help me get land but no whatever he had he just took and he went to help david he didn't expect anything in return and if we read through the story we see that david actually even asks him that what can i do for you and he says nothing so barzilai just helped david out of his heart he didn't expect anything in return from david and as the third aspect that we can learn from barzilai being christians having the love of christ in us when we help someone we should help them not with any secret agenda or secret um, plan in mind on what we can get out but we should actually help them to be a blessing to them just as christ was a blessing to us it says in matthew also take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them otherwise you have no reward from your father in heaven therefore when you do a charitable deed do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue 
So we definitely don't want to be hypocrites, do we? So whenever we help people, we can learn three aspects from Barzilai. We can do it cheerfully. We can be cheerful givers. We can be compassionate rather than just being sympathetic. And we can give or we can help without any secret agendas in our mind. Coming to the close of the first point, there are a few questions that we can ponder upon or life applications we can say that where we can improve upon. When was the last time, some of the questions can be like, when was the last time we went that little extra mile to help someone in need or to serve God in the way we should have? And do we feel that we have kept the best away? If you look at Barzilla, he took everything that could fit on his vehicle or on his animal that he took to David, towards David. He took everything that he could. Would we do that if we had to be in his place? Now coming to the second point, like I said, or the second section, Barzillai's testimony of excuses. Now God's word, as we all know, is amazing. He records everything with such precision in the Bible. And Barzillai, in a lot of ways, for some of us, might remind us of our own selves. He was willing to give, but Barzillai was not willing to go. He had a number of excuses already ready when David asked him to come back with him. He had no problem giving David his possessions, but he denied David the most important thing, his own presence. And if you see that the one thing that David actually wanted from Barzillai was probably his fellowship or just wanting Barzillai to go back with him. But that was the exact thing that Barzillai did too. So we look at all the different excuses that Barzillai comes up with. Now, the reference to this passage is chapter 19, verses 31 to 40. Now, some of us, when we read through the verses, might have a different opinion. Some of us may say that, what was wrong in Barzillai saying no? Maybe he was old. It says that he was 80 years old. So some of us may say that, he was 80 years old, let him rest now. Or probably he can retire gracefully. He didn't have to go back to David. But as we saw through the story, or as we've seen previously through many of the Old Testament stories, before Barzillai, we see that God had used people in mighty ways. God had used Moses when he was 80. God used Caleb when he was 85. And God, in his own ways, could have used Barzillai if Barzillai was willing to go. But Barzillai was just limiting David and in a way maybe he was limiting God himself and saying that no, no, I don't want to go. I'd rather stay back and be happy. So therefore Barzillai was just self-creating barriers for himself. Let's look at all the excuses that he had. The first excuse that he had was, I'm too old. And that was a very famous excuse knowing his age. He said, I'm too old. How can I come with you? Now, when David saw him, David must have approximately gauged what his age would be. So David probably knew that he was old, but still David didn't mind that. He just said, no problem, you still come along with me. But then Barzillai says, no, I'm too old. Many of us do that too. Some of us say we are too young to do something. Or some of us say we are too old to do something. I have been guilty of that. Sometimes I have said, oh, I'm too young. How can I even manage that for God? But for God... Nobody is too old and nobody is too young. All he wants is just for you to say, I am here and I am willing to go. And that was Barzillai's first mistake. He said, I am too old to go. For God, age is not an excuse. Second, second excuse was, it's too much to do. Now in this, it's too much to do. There are so many different questions that Barzillai puts forth. There are three excuses in this one excuse itself. There are three can I questions or can I do this type of questions that Barzillai asks. So the first is, Barzillai says, can I discern between good and evil? Now Barzillai must have tried to tell him, do you think I'm so old? Do you think I have the knack to decide what is good, 
what is evil what should be done what should not be done maybe you may maybe he must have thought that david would have actually uh, let him do something in his palace or in his uh, in his kingdom and he was like do you think i'll be able to do that but the irony here is that when barzillai says can i discern between good and evil he has already discerned between good and evil and yet he is giving that excuse now if you see the story like i when i started i told you that everyone was against david except barzillai who thought that maybe this was god's anointed and he still helped david the kingdom the people were all for absalom but barzillai made that decision that no matter how many followed absalom he will still support david that means he had already discerned between what was good and what was evil and yet again here he asked david do you think i can discern between good and evil he had already done that it was just an excuse that he was giving david next he says can thy servant taste what i eat or what i drink now david was inviting him to be a guest at his table to just come to dine with him now at that time the king calling you home to just sit and dine was a big thing it's like now if you say it's like the prime minister or probably the president calling you over to sup with him it was a big time thing that time but your barzillai asked him do you think i can eat do you think i can drink now like i said david must have seen his age he might have known all of these things in spite of that he still called barzillai and now barzillai is asking you think i can do that similarly so many times god calls us or god calls his children to come and dine with him to come to him for a time of fellowship and we just like barzillai tell god do you think we can eat do you think we can drink with you we might laugh about barzillai but are many of us here guilty of doing same thing with god so many times we say in fact during the past sermons we have seen so many people speaking about by god or by jesus christ says come and dine with me i will sup with you if you are willing how many times like barzillai god is telling us i am coming to sup with you but we are not willing we are like no no we won't be able to eat no no we won't be able to drink we won't be able to fellowship with you we are just as guilty as barzillai was the third can i question was can i hear any more of the voice of singing men and singing women now at that time singing or making music was mostly linked with the goodness of god or with testimony if you even see the first song that was recorded in the bible in the book of exodus that also was sung when god delivered or god saved israel you can find that song in exodus chapter 14 and 15 and this was in the old testament but even if you look at the new testament singing or making music was a sign of having a changed life or being filled with the spirit and barzillai is asking david you think i can sing you think i can hear the voice of all these people the amorphet he's talking to david that means he can hear people talking right but still he says can i hear their voice when they sing now we know david david was a man who has written so many songs so imagine when david won the victory and went back how much of singing would be there how much of worship david would have to praise the lord and barzillai in his innocence is telling him you think i can hear that that means indirectly he has said no to all the points of praise and worship that david could have so barzillai felt that maybe he would have no appreciation only for the singing and the praise and worship that would be going on at that time and we need to learn from him that we need to not take the time of god the singing the praising and the worshiping for granted it's not about the voice we might all not be extraordinary singers but in our own innocence we can sing songs we can sing psalms for the lord and praise and worship his name the third excuse he gave is that i'm too weak like i said david knew about his age 
he also knew the limitations that Barzilai had. He probably took all these things into account when he asked him. But he still didn't consider this. But yet Barzilai is telling him, when I am too weak, I will not be able to go. You need to remember, the Lord's people might be a burden to us or may be a burden to man, but they will never be a burden to Christ. Whoever we are, however we are, whatever situation we are, we are never a burden to Christ. And we will never get on God's nerves, whatever we do. But that doesn't mean we keep on doing wrong. But in comparison to this excuse, he says, I am too weak, which also didn't stand right in front of David. The next excuse, it says, it's too far. He was willing to go a little way, but he was not willing to go all the way. He was willing to make a to token gesture and go up to Jordan, but he was not willing to go beyond that. He would rather go to Jordan and come back. Now imagine if Jesus Christ had come down to earth and not go all the way to the cross. What if he had to say, no, I'll just come down in the form of man and then I'll remain here. I completed half of my duty. Or maybe that I'll grow up to be a man. I'll, ha I'll perform miracles, but I won't go to the cross. What if Jesus had to think that I'll go a little way, but not all the way. Would we be where we are today? We wouldn't. Therefore, we need to learn from Barzillai and not give the same excuse that Barzillai gave, that it's too far. He then says, it's too late. He liked his life. Probably he just wanted to stay there and be like, maybe I can just die in my own place. Probably God would have had wonderful plans for him if he had to go back with David. But no, he's like, it's too late. I'd rather stay here. Many of us are just like him. Sometimes we don't give in to God because we are afraid that if we give in to the Lord's will, our comfortable life would just be disrupted. We would have to go and do something that we don't like to do or we don't want to do. Therefore, we need to learn from Barzillai and not say that it's too late or it's too bad. Next he says, it's too bad, I'm not going. Finally, he tells David, it's too bad, I can't go, but you take my boy, Chimham. Now, some commentaries interpret that Chimham was probably Barzillai's son. Now, Chimham agreed to go in Barzillai's place. So, all that Barzillai could have got was all given to Chimham. Chimham received the blessings that could have been bestowed upon Barzillai. Now, Barzillai, like I said, he was willing to give, but he was not willing to go. He was a man marked by excellence, but he was also a man marked by excuses. He didn't himself go. He was willing to send someone else in his place, just like so many of us today. If someone tells us to do something for God, or if God tells us, okay, go and do this, we'll immediately be like, no, no, don't send us, that person is better. Send that person in my place. But no, we need to be willing. We need to be open with God. Nothing could be worse when the child of God or Jesus Christ leaves us and uses somebody else in our place just because we were not willing. Imagine somebody else going all the way, doing something that, the, that God willed to happen and getting the crown on the last day just because you said or I said that no I can't go all the way or just because we say that no we cannot do this or we cannot do that we need to learn from Barzillai we just not need to give but we also need to go our presence is as important as us giving something to the house of God in conclusion we can see that Barzillai was faithful to David and in the little time that he had, he lived, he gave all that he could for David. Yes, but he also had a list of excuses that we need to learn from. We need to learn his giving and we also need to not repeat what he did, that is giving excuses.
when the king returned we find that this man was still faithful barzillai was yet old but he still kept walking for king david how would we be when king jesus returns back when he returns back will he find us walking for him and for his kingdom now even for barzillai in his faithfulness and in his help all that he helped king david with we see in the book of kings david tells solomon on his deathbed to show kindness to the sons of barzillai for all that they have done it says show kindness one king says show kindness to the sons of barzillai of gilead and let them be among those who eat at your table like i said for god nothing is less everything that you do with the right heart and with the right mind matters to god similarly here we see barzillai helped he went all out of his way to help david and we see that not just barzillai but even barzillai's sons were rewarded for this that is when you are faithful to god when you show compassion to god and to his men and when we are available to god without excuses god not only rewards our faithfulness he not only blesses us but he also blesses our generations to come quite some time back uh, my dad spoke about leaving a legacy for your children when he had spoken about family what better legacy can you leave for your child than direct god's blessings in their life and this is exactly what happened for barzillai he was blessed but even his sons were blessed because of his faithfulness but one more point of observation is he was blessed for his faithfulness to david but then comes the part of excuses now if you read through the books of nehemiah and ezra they were searching for the records of people to appoint people to the priesthood now it was a big thing to get appointed to the priesthood but if you read through these stories in nehemiah and ezra they were also searching for the records of barzillai's sons or barzillai's family so that they could be appointed in the priesthood and if you see the conclusion is that they don't find the records and when they don't find the records and when they are excluded from priesthood these kind of people are declared as unclean or some versions say they are defined as defiled people now imagine if barzillai had to actually go back with david maybe there would be records existing of barzillai being there but you we see they couldn't find any records and in conclusion these his sons or his generations couldn't be appointed to the priesthood in fact finally i would like to say that uh, we've been speaking a lot about revival we've been praying about revival in fact uncle clive too had spoken about revival every friday we have been praying that god send a revival in the church god send a revival in our land and uh, all of us know for a revival first we ourselves need to change and when we change can we Uh, that change be shown to other people and through that through us everyone around us too can help to be changed like edric shared in his sermon about the samaritan woman by the well how she was influenced by jesus and she went and told the entire village about what christ did for us today from barzillai's lesson we can learn to be faithful we can learn that we need to be compassionate we can learn that we need to stand up for the truth no matter what the situation around is we need to not be just fair weather supporters of christ no fair weather supporters of people but we need to be standing up for the right no matter what it is we need to most importantly be open to the lord's will and let him work in our lives just the way he wants and when we learn each one of these points we are already walking a little bit towards the way of revival because when this changes us we can influence the people around us
we need to remember it's not just about giving but it's also about our presence because nothing can be compared for us being present and walking for the lord and his kingdom i hope you all have something to take back from today and you all each one of us has learned something that we can apply in our life in the weeks to come i hope you are blessed god bless and have a wonderful week ahead surpass all understanding. You will be awed by that peace. And I'm sure you may have experienced that peace many a time. And I pray to God this morning, I bless you that you will have that peace that not only surpasses your understanding, but it will guard your heart and your mind. The grace of Christ when he told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. I pray that you, that grace is your portion of your life. I also pray for the fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit, the sweet Holy Spirit, our comforter will comfort us in the times of trouble. This Spirit, the sweet Spirit who will help us when we require the help, particularly when you want, when you want to get out of that darkness. When you want to stay away from the obstacles that Satan puts against you. 
When you want this fear to be dispelled, He's the Holy Ghost. To ask of Him, fellowship with Him, commune with Him. I pray this blessing on the people of God. The people of God said, Amen and Amen. God bless you.